Welcome to the rebirth of BMW. This new iX3 kicks off a whole new era for the Bavarian company and we're here to find out just why it's so crucial and just why it's so exciting. My name is Stephen Dorby and this is Chasing Cars. Chasing Cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct. So why is this car so important? Well, this new iX3 starts off Neue Klasse, German for new class, and it's a whole new era of BMWs which we're gonna see across the next decade and beyond. It's not the first time BMW's done this though. Around 65 years ago, the company wasn't in the great health that it's currently in, so it needed you know, a bit of a rebirth back then. And it started with a bunch of small saloon cars, all using similar engines, similar platforms, similar architecture. And those cars, some of which have become classics, like the 2002 and the 15 or two, they've gone on to shape the mindset and the dynamics of BMWs that have followed. This is Neue Class 2.0, and this is the first car. And this grill here that we see, so it's a bit smaller, a bit narrower than the ones we've seen on recent BMWs, but it does hark back to those Neue Klasse cars of the 1960s, only this time it's illuminated rather than in chrome. This whole car is quite aerodynamic as well, surprisingly so for a big SUV. A drag coefficient of 0.24 matches the i4 saloon that's currently out, which is quite impressive when you look at the shape of this. But a lot of the aerodynamics, it's clever, it's underneath the car, or it's in the flush surfaces down the side of the car here. Let's take a closer look. So as we said, this is quite an aerodynamic car. And one of the first clues starts with these wheels. As standard, the iX3 comes with 20 inch wheels, but these 22s, they have this aero lip around them, which eke out a few extra kilometers of range. In fact, that's a bit of a headline for this car. This launch iX3 50X drive has an 800 kilometer range on the WLTP cycle, which, you know, that's gonna tip a lot of people into buying their first EV, you would imagine. It gets rid of range anxiety and it makes this car quite usable for families. So we've got very smooth aerodynamic side. The glass here sits very flush, as do the door handles. And back here, we have the charging port. So underneath this car sits a 108 kilowatt hour usable battery and a new cylindrical cell structure, which BMW has brought to the iX3, which further increases efficiency. We also have 800 volt charging architecture and rapid charging speeds of up to 400 kilowatts, which means you can top up 350 kilometers of range in just 10 minutes, which again really makes this a usable family SUV. You also have performance as well, 345 kilowatts of power for not 100 in under 4.9 seconds. So as much as this is a BMW of a whole new era, there's still lots of familiarity in the styling, especially around the back. So we have this L shape and the lights here, which echoes BMWs from the past few decades, even if it's in a slightly new shape of unit. We also have powerful rear haunches here, just to suggest the rear wheel drive dynamics, which we're used to from BMW. We also have a very prominent badge in the center inside this sort of crease. Helps the aerodynamics a little bit, but also with increasing Chinese competition and just so many electric SUVs to choose from, BMW is very, very proud of its heritage. So inside the new iX3, there is a lot to talk about. For starters, well, there's no starter button. You just get in, pop your foot on the brake, pop the car into drive, and you're good to go. A little bit like Tesla, you might say, or a bunch of other EVs, but BMW is looking to take buyers back from Tesla, who they lost to the Californian firm over the last few years. BMW has always thought of itself as a pioneer of technology, and Tesla maybe stole that role a little bit recently, but the iX3, it wants to grab that role back. But there's also convention in here as well. We've got four regular electric window switches, we've got buttons to adjust the mirrors, and, when we get to the steering wheel, we've got regular stalks for the indicators, for the wipers. Those haven't moved to the middle of the steering wheel. We do, though, have something clever in the middle here. So if you look at this wheel closer, well, it's a whole brand new design. You don't have to have this wheel design. BMW will have others, but this is the headline. And in here, we have these buttons, and it's called Shy Tech. So only the functions which are available to you actually light up, which means this slightly dizzying array of buttons It'll just be a bit less confusing on the move. The other headline act, it's this huge panoramic iDrive screen here. It's around 43 inches pillar to pillar and it complements this massive 18 inch screen in the middle. Unlike a Tesla, it's not portrait. And unlike pretty much any other car we've experienced, it's sort of this kind of twisted hexagonal pattern, which is really useful. It's helped the airbag deploy in a different way. And it means your hand as a driver from the steering wheel, it just reaches the buttons that little bit easier. How it feels in reality, we'll have to experience when we review the car. But for now, well, it's a promising start, I think. BMW has also realized that there's lots of apps, lots of functions, so it's simplified the operation a little bit, kept the apps easier to find, made the driving modes a little bit simpler, which is no easy task, 
when you consider what this car can do. It has four new super brains which control all the various elements of the car. I think they're designed to make it a bit simpler so that all the functions and assistance systems, they just talk to each other without you having to be part of that process and they make driving, well, hopefully as simple and as traditional as possible. One of the main systems is called Heart of Joy, which is, I guess, quite a cheesy name, but the idea is it brings all the driving dynamics software together so that this is a BMW which we can still enjoy driving, which is what we want to hear. It also means the assistance systems operate in what's called a symbiotic way. So the lane departure assist and the active cruise control, if they sense that you as a driver are pretty engaged, then you know they'll just lift off their assistance a little bit. They'll not get as involved. They'll allow you to drive the car, well, as much as you can really. That's good news. Of course, this is a family SUV, so the back seats matter as well. Now, Neue Klasse starts on an all electric architecture. So unlike the previous iX3, which saw some batteries and motors kind of shoved in an internal combustion car, this is purely an EV. The platform is bespoke, which means more legroom. So while the outside exterior dimensions, they're the same as the old iX3, inside we've got the legroom of an X5. And the floor's not too high as well, which is sometimes a problem in battery cars. So there's decent room, you can have your legs in a nice comfortable position, even as an adult. There's lots of room back here. We don't have the screens of the front of the car. It's a lot simpler and more conventional back here. So we've got vents, we've got charging points for the rear passengers. But one thing that isn't conventional, these neat little electric door poles. I quite like them. It looks a bit more modern, but we've got that traditional BMW thunk when you close the door. So here we are around the back of the new BMW iX3 and boot space is going to be pretty crucial to some of the buyers of this car. It's about the same as before, so it starts at 520 litres with the seats up, which is a little bit more than the iX3 before it. If you flip the seats down, that triples to around 1500 litres. But what BMW has done this time around is fit a frunk. It's responded to customer feedback and we now have a 58 litre luggage capacity underneath the front bonnet. And the materials around that, because they're hidden, they've been made out of recycled materials. In fact, about a third of this car is made of recycled materials. It's a whole Neuer class approach. The carbon footprint of the car is maybe around a third smaller than the iX3 before it. And it comes from every part of the car, from the materials, from the production. So the factory in Hungary, where production starts later in 2025, it uses renewable energy. Now, sales will start in Australia around the middle of 2026, we hope. We don't have prices yet. But prices in Germany will start at 68,000 euros for this 50X drive. And then there'll be a base model which starts at around 60,000 euros. Those prices mirror the iX3 before it. So if we get the same approach in Australia, match prices to before, that'll be good news. So there's a heck of a lot to digest with this new iX3. We've got all the tech inside, those four super brains, this whole new era of BMW, and not to mention the design. Now you folks always have a lot of thoughts about BMW design. Maybe you like this new grill, maybe you hate it, but there's a comment section below, let us know what you think. And if you've liked this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. This has been Chasing Cars.